Hey, Penny Rafferty, Penny Rafferty Realty. Thanks for joining me and watching my video. I don't normally name my episodes, but we're going to call this one Laundry Rooms and Litter Boxes. And for those of you who have watched my previous videos, you'll know that I really talk about things that I've encountered while I'm out working. So yesterday I had a buyer that came in and we went out to all the model homes and we decided that the cottages were the best fit for her. And of course, like most people, she has animals, so she has cats. So the big conversation was, where are we going to put the litter box? She decided she liked the bamboo. You may or may not notice, but we're standing here in my bamboo that we're building in phase seven. We're gonna call it the blue bamboo just because I'm decorating it in navy and white. Not that you care, but just so you know. So we started talking about where she's gonna put her litter box for the cat. We decided we're gonna put it in the laundry room. So. We started talking about what if we did a stackable washer and dryer in the laundry room, giving her plenty of space for the litter box and other things she may, she may want. So if you put the stackable washer and dryer here, we talked about having a table there. She can put the litter boxes underneath. She can fold her clothes, put her detergent on top. Um, so pretty much solved that problem. For me, I thought about putting a stackable washer and dryer in here, maybe putting a bench. So you can sit down and take your shoes, maybe making it a mud room, you know, put little hooks so you can hang up your jackets or your leashes, things like that. But then, because primarily what I do is problem solve, I started thinking because we're doing the pre-drywall walkthrough. So if you look at the laundry room, when you do a laundry room, you have the washer on one side, the dryer on the other. So the dryer box is here. So if you do a stackable washer and dryer, your washer goes here, your dryer goes here, they're gonna to have to move this box up to vent your, your dryer out. So when I meet with my builder in a couple of weeks, because I'm going out of town, of course I am, um, we're gonna to have to have that discussion that if we put a stackable washer and dryer in, what's it gonna to take to move this vent and move it up? Because should we do it before pre-drywall, before drywall? I think the answer is yes because otherwise I'll have to cut out the drywall and move this up. And then we have all kinds of other shenanigans, like here's the outlet. They probably have to move the outlet up. So when we meet with him on the 5th of March, that's the discussion we're going to have to have because that stuff's going to be moved if we indeed intend on having a stackable washer and dryer to give us more room in the laundry room. So that's really why we're talking about this today, is at what point do we do this? I also want to tell you today is February 25th. It's important to know that because if you watched any of my videos before, you'll know that we signed our paperwork in March of last year. We picked our bees in June. They poured our slab at the end of December. Yahoo, that's when really things start heating up. So they poured our slab. We passed inspection, passed the rough plumbing, right? They put sticks in the air. So we passed the framing inspection. We also have mechanicals. Mechanicals are plumbing, electric, and HVAC. So we passed all of those inspections. So next up is what Minto calls meet the builder. And that's when we walk through with our builder and say, oh, we have canned lights in the living room. Yep, there they are. Oh, we have a gas cooktop. We don't. Oh, we have a gas cooktop. See, it's stubbed out for gas. So you walk around and see that everything you picked out electronically, mechanically, plumbing wise has been done correctly because once you meet with your builder and sign off on that, the next step is drywall. So on March 5th, after I sign off with the builder, the next time you see my bamboo, my blue bamboo, it will be drywall and it will really be going. So I hope that you'll continue to watch and just keep in mind, and I wanted to tell you this, this is based on the the buyer from yesterday, because she called me, she reached out, here we are helping her, you know, choose a new home through Minto. She said, why wouldn't somebody want to use a buyer's agent, which is what I would be considered. Minto pays your commission, right? You're knowledgeable. You go to the model homes with us, but most of all, you're a problem solver, like stocking the washer and dryer to make rooms for the litter boxes. And I'm not saying anything bad about Minto sales reps. They do their job, but their job is not to put you in the car and drive you to the model homes 
and problem solve your particular problems like where the litter box goes, where am I putting the dog bed, where does the wine fridge grow? So, so important things, important things like that. So one of my jobs as a value add is problem solver. So if you want an outstanding problem solver, reach out to me, say it with me before you cross the threshold at Mento. Remember Mento will pay my commission, you don't have to, and you get all of my 20 years of expertise. And you also get my expertise of having lived here in the neighborhood for two years. So my name is Penny Rafferty. I'm a full-time resident here in Margaritaville. I'm also licensed in both South Carolina and Georgia. Call me, text me, send me an email. Heck, send me a smoke signal. I'm happy to help. If you want more tips, go to my website, Penny Rafferty Realty. There's a tab that says Latitude Living Magazine. Got my latest magazine there. And you can see some of the fun social things we do here in the neighborhood. So as we say here in Margaritaville, fins up.